Hi, my name is Nick Bethard. I'm a senior sales engineer here with Al Atlona. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Atlona Velocity and Cisco Telepresence integration. Now, before we get started, just a quick little note. Uh, when we say Cisco Telepresence, what does that mean? That can mean any Cisco hard codec system from let's call it recent memory. Uh, so that could be a uh, Cisco WebEx Room Kit or Room Kit Pro or Room Kit uh, Mini, you know, any of the current generation. It could also be some of the previous generation devices such as the SX80, SX20, SX10, uh, those sorts of devices. They all share a common API, so we integrate with them exactly the same. So what are we doing here? Uh, well, before we get started, I want to just go through the four kind of high-level points of what we're trying to accomplish with this integration. First, we're looking to establish a single touch panel solution centered around the Cisco Touch 10. Without this integration, what you would end up having is you would end up having basically two touch interfaces. You would end up with a, a Cisco Touch 10 sitting on the table for driving the Cisco codec, and then you would have a separate interface for driving the AV uh, and room control portion of the system. Here, we want to integrate everything together so that when the end user walks in, they only have one interface to touch. They don't have to sit down and wonder, okay, in order to get the system working, which one do I use? The next big thing that we're gonna that we're gonna talk about is this idea of room on off using the Cisco standby state. So those of you that are already kind of familiar with Cisco codecs, you'll know that there are really three standby states in the Cisco in Cisco's world. There's standby, there's active, and there's half wake, where half wake is kind of somewhere in between. Um, so basically what we allow you to do is we allow you to drive the room status, whether the room is on or off, uh, and that means uh, if the room's on, maybe that means that the projector comes down and the screen lowers, um, maybe that means that the lights get dimmed to a certain level, etc. Um, we're going to drive that room on off state based on the Cisco standby state, so that if that uh, Cisco goes to sleep, if that panel goes black and the Cisco goes into standby, then the room is going to turn itself off as well. And conversely, if somebody walks in and taps that panel to turn it on, the system's going to light up automatically without having to do anything else. The next thing that we're going to talk about, and this is this is where I feel like we're getting to the meat and potatoes of the integration, is this idea of adding enhanced input capability and doing it in such a way that it's uh, invisible and seamless to the end user. We don't want the end user to walk into a room that has this functionality going on behind the scenes and feel like it operates any differently than any other room that they've ever went in with a Cisco Touch 10. We want them to have a seamless uh, intuitive experience. So, and, and you'll see that. Um, you know, one of the big limitations of the Cisco Codex, whether it's all the way down at the, the bottom of the line um, or, you know, the smallest codec, the WebEx Room Kit Mini, where it only has one input and one output, all the way up to, you know, even the WebEx Room Kit Plus, which has, um, you know, I, I believe if I remember correctly, a couple of inputs and a couple of outputs. Um, it's fairly, fairly limited. Uh, even when you get up to the WebEx Room Kit Pro, uh, where you've got a few more inputs, uh, it's all still HDMI. So what if you need signal extension? What if you need to drive more than uh, more outputs than what the codec supports? How do you handle these situations? Let's say you have a boardroom that you want to have uh, four or even five table inputs down the length of this very long boardroom table, and then you have, you know, let's say four or five monitors scattered throughout the room. How do you how do you handle that? Um, well, with this integration, we make it easy and straightforward and again with simple integration that ties right into the system the fourth point kind of you know dovetails into that and that's the idea of using the Cisco touch 10 for in-room controls 
As you may know, the Cisco system doesn't have any native capability to perform in-room controls. And by in-room controls, uh, as an example, um, using a, a, a relay to drive screen up and down for a projector screen or talking RS-232 to a lighting control system, uh, those sorts of things. The, the Cisco doesn't have any of that kind of inbuilt. So we want to add that capability. And again, we want to do it in a, in a, a seamless and intuitive a way as possible. And I'm going to show you that. So next, let's show you the system that we're going to be looking at. So it, it's a simple little system, but it has a couple of little catches. So this is a uh, simple little system based around a WebEx RoomKit Mini. Um, but the gotchas are A, we have multiple inputs that, that they want to be able to use uh, at the table. And B, we have two displays in the room. How do you handle that with a WebEx Room Kit Mini where the WebEx Room Kit Mini only has one input and one output? Well, we do that by putting one of our switchers, uh, OME MS42, along with velocity behind the scenes. And I, I should probably mention that uh, this, this idea of enhanced input capability uh, applies to all of our switching architectures, not just HDBase-C, but also uh, AV over IP as well. Uh, so it can basically be any Atlona switching and extension infrastructure behind the scenes running the show. Here, we're using an MS42. Um, elsewhere, you can use other things. So here, Basically what we have is we have all those inputs, those multiple inputs at the table going into the MS42. Uh, and then we have one output of the MS42 HDMI going into the WebEx Room Kit Mini. And then we have the other output driving the second display in the room. So that second display can display any uh, content from any of those table inputs. And the primary display, the WebEx display, will display the output of the WebEx Room Kit Mini. And this is all being driven by the touch 10 at the table with velocity kind of running the show uh, behind the scenes. Now let's see what it looks like in action. I'm going to bring up my little camera here and we can see. So what I've got here is uh, there's a couple of things that you can see in this, uh, in, in this monitor. One, obviously, is the Cisco Touch 10 sitting right there center frame. Um, as you can see, the Cisco system's in a standby state right now, so everything's off. The room is off. Sitting right underneath it is the MS42, which is driving the, uh, the switching of the room. And then kind of behind it, in the uh, somewhat in the corner, is uh, the monitor that's directed, connected to the output of the uh, Cisco telepresence system. So now, uh, as a first step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the room on. And how do I do that? I touch the panel. Now you see uh, the monitor. You, you can't see the entire monitor, but you can see enough of it to get an idea of what's going on. Uh, you saw the monitor light up. That's because the Cisco system said, OK, the room is out of standby. And Velocity said, OK, cool. I'm going to turn everything on, including this monitor. So mission one accomplished. Room on off state is tied to Cisco standby state. All right. Mission number two. Let's extend the input output capability of this system. So to show you that, I'm just going to go to the share, the share tray, just like you always would. And when I go to the share tray, Instead of just seeing the one input that's native to the system, we actually see two inputs. We see HDMI 3 is tied to input 1, and HDMI 4 is tied to input 2. So now I can actually go here, and if I click on input 1 preview, if I can tap it, then you can see my Apple TV screensaver come up in the background, and you can see we're on HDMI 3. Now, if I go to preview input 2, you see the switcher switches to HDMI 4. And also you see the background image switch to my different input. Now, the other kind of really cool thing about this functionality is we maintain the idea of input presence detection. So that's one of the nice things about uh, native Cisco inputs is if you don't have something plugged in, it won't let you share it. So that 
helps prevent confusion on the end user's part. So actually, I don't even have to, I don't even have to stop previewing. If I just unplug that input, you can see it stops sharing. We drop back to the Cisco um, splash screen. And now the Touch 10 is saying, connect your device because there's nothing connected. And if I click this, it won't let me share it because there's nothing there to share. Now, as soon as I take this HDMI cable and reconnect it to the switcher input, now you see it lights back up and it's ready to go. Now, the other, the last point that we talked about was this idea of in-room control. And in order to demonstrate in-room control, uh, we're going to be using the second output of the switcher. So basically, I've set up a screen to control the second output of the switcher. It's one of the nice things about the Cisco Touch system is it allows you to go and build, I don't want to say a, a full custom uh, page, uh, let's call it a semi-custom page, uh, where you can... Uh, throw buttons on there, you can arrange them in rows, you can name them, uh, and and basically those buttons uh, just become button presses. And that talks to our velocity control system, and then velocity gets programmed to know what to do when those buttons are pressed. So if I go into it, loan a direct output, you can see I've set up again a, a, a semi-custom screen here with a label and a row uh, for the various inputs from USB-C to DisplayPort to the two HDMI inputs, as well as this, another row showing input availability or input presence uh, in the same manner as the, the native inputs. So here, uh, you know, we can see if I hit HDMI 4, you see that HD base T uh, output switched to HDMI 4. So we've got in-room control capability using the Cisco Touch 10. So mission accomplished. So that's it. That's, uh, you know, kind of the nutshell of how we're using Atlona Velocity uh, along with Atlona switching infrastructure and extension infrastructure behind the scenes uh, integrated in with a Cisco codec and the Touch 10 so that you can have a seamless user experience even for rooms that don't necessarily have uh, setups that really play themselves nicely to only having a, a Cisco system. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And, you know, we hope to hear from you. If you have questions or need, uh, you know, more in-depth information on, on this functionality, please reach out to us. Uh, you can go to www.atlona.com and get more information or, uh, or again, you know, reach out and we can get you taken care of. Thanks and have a great day.